Hey, welcome back. Brandon Northwick here, and today we're going to go into the vetting process. Okay, this is going to show you how to increase your conversions by adding this one step to your sales process. Now, when we talk about you know wasting time and spending time with these so-called time vampires, right? And if you're in the business of selling your time for money, right, where you're exchanging your time for money, then it becomes uh, very apparent that you want to maximize each meeting with each prospect because if they're not fully qualified, you could end up wasting hours, if not even days of work, um, trying to convince or persuade or set schedules for and things like that. And we don't want to do that. There's too many people out there in the world right now that need your service. And if you're good at what you do, it's actually your duty to get in front of them, but only in front of those that you know are ready to make a decision. So we have something that's called the qualification process. Now that is going to be inside of the videos. Uh, prior to this, I think it's called um, actually stop wasting time with vampire, uh, you know, how to avoid time vampires, right? I, th I think is that the lesson that's called inside the academy. So go ahead and look through that one. And that's going to show you the qualification process that we have. That's the beginning point. But after you get them qualified, meaning after they actually fill out the form, after they actually apply to work with you or to get your time, then we want to start here, which is called the vetting process. Okay, so if they pass through the qualification process, then we want to actually go into um, the vetting process, which the rules of the vetting process is you never want to actually talk to anybody who isn't an ideal prospect. And you're going to know if they're ideal based on the qualification form you have them fill out. So if you're selling digital marketing agency um, services, if you're selling chiropractor services, if you're selling real estate, photography services, consulting services, any kind of service right now, what's going to happen is you're going to want to only work with a, with a certain type of person. So when you do this, make sure that the questions you're asking on your qualification form are going to help you identify that prospect because you can give these people a call back and say, I'm sorry, but you know, you don't qualify because X, Y, and Z and be honest with them. You know, I'm going to send you some cool free stuff, but you know, I wish you the best of luck. Here's some more referrals or here's some people you can go and talk to and you could send them maybe to somebody else, right? But those now who are passing through the first stage, which is the qualification process now, we can now give them a call. Okay. And so you never want to talk to anybody who doesn't know your price. Okay. So this is where we want to make sure that either on your website and your advertising, um, in your marketing, on your landing page, on your sales page, that people know where the price is. Okay. It, you want to make sure that you've been very upfront about that. And the reason why is because you're going to, yes, speak to less people, but you're going to speak to more people that are pre-framed so that your conversion rates will be higher. And this is a conversation we get into a lot with clients, which is, well, would you rather talk to 10 people and close, well, actually, would you rather talk to 100 people and close one, or would you rather talk to 10 and close eight? And that's the difference. It really is. You know, you could have the 1% conversion, be talking to a bunch of people and being busy all day, or you could maximize your time and make sure you're only speaking to those who are ready to make a decision. And again, the third here is that you never give your time away to people who aren't ready to make a commitment. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Okay. So step one is they've got to apply. Okay. And you're going to get this done through marketing. I've shared with you a few different funnels that we've used and I'm continuing to, con uh, to test what we have going on so that we could then keep you updated and you could just model after what's already working. Okay. And then they're getting vetted, which is done before the close. And that's what we're going to go through today. And then you go through the collaborative close, which is what we have actual training on in um, later parts of this module. Now, what is vetting? Okay, never underestimate your prospect's willingness to lie to you. This is huge right now. A lot of folks, when they get started in business, they feel like they have these prospects. Like, why are these people lying? Why are they lying? That's usually the question that we get a lot of. Why are they lying? And well, liars are liars. And it's just, you know, it might be embarrassment, shame, might be just cowardly, um, you know, background. It might be, who knows why it is? But lies will come all the time. White lies, big lies, small lies. So you got to be able to just kind of absorb that and roll with it, okay? So you never want to underestimate your prospect's willingness to lie to you on the qualification form. Think about it. His job is to get free help and your job is to make the sale. And the purpose now of this vetting call is to make sure that you're actually, uh, that they're actually good prospects. You got to make sure that they are good prospects and you're going to do this by being brutally honest, okay? So here's the vetting framework. We're going to build rapport. We're going to frame the call. We're going to elicit the outcome, state the facts, ask what they do, and then approve or decline. And then let's go through these step by step, okay? Vetting rapport, okay? This is the simple act of being friendly and genuinely interested. Okay, oddly enough, I see, uh, I usually use their graphic location, right? I reference their area code. And uh, your goal is to simply be genuinely nice and friendly, okay? That if you can't do this, 
then you shouldn't be in business right now. But you got to be genuinely nice and friendly. Okay, it's going to help you with making sure that that rapport is being built. And next, you want to make sure that you're going to frame the call and set the expectations. Okay, the rapport portion that we just went through, two minutes tops, two minutes tops. You're not going to get off on the different types of, uh, you know, topics and things like that. Like I said, I open up with like the geographic location, meaning that I'll mention like, hey, are you from New York? Oh, perfect. I can't wait to get my family to New York. What should I go and visit? Oh, I'm out here in Texas. Perfect. Okay, well, let's get into it. Now you're going to set the expectations. You want them to know why you're calling and what your objectives are and how long it's going to take. You want to get their permission to proceed. That's the key right there. You want to continue to get permission. So you let them know, hey, look, you know, uh, um, here's the, like my, what Sarah does the vetting calls. And what will happen is, you know, hey, do you have about five minutes? I'm calling because I saw you filled out a qualification form to get your, and then whatever it is, is it a free consultation, a free marketing campaign? What are we offering for that, for that form that got filled out? And I just wanted to go over real quick the answers and see if you were, um, you know, and, and, and confirm the time that you wanted to go ahead and meet with Brandon. And that's going to be the time that we're going to vet them now. Okay. That's when we're going to vet them. And again, is that okay with you? And they're going to go, yeah, that's okay. And if they don't say it's okay, they're going to ask to be called back, which is totally okay because they answered the first time and the likelihood of them answering again is very high actually. So you let them know that I'm calling to make sure that we can actually help you to get what you need before I schedule a consultation or blueprinting session with you, whatever it is that you call it. The truth is we don't have like magic powers and we can't help everybody and I don't want to waste any of your time. Okay, I've got a few questions about what you're trying to accomplish so I can make sure we're possibly a good fit. Naturally, you're welcome to ask me any questions that you want. Now, this call is going to take about five minutes or 15 minutes and then we could schedule the next session if we decide to move forward. Is that okay? So here's how we have it. This is what we have happen. So the call right now is going to be about five to 10 minutes. We let them know that when you meet with Brandon, the call will take about 60 to 75 minutes, and then you can move forward to schedule the next session if you decide to move forward. Is that okay? And they're going to go yes or no. Okay, so here's where you set the call and the expectations, and now you're going to elicit the outcome, okay? This is where you find out what they want, okay? So you're going to say, hey, look, tell me, Jim, what is it that made you interested in this session? Very basic stuff right here, right? And when you get them to tell you in specifics, get the specifics, then you want to follow up with the Dan Sullivan question. And you can get this from the Dan Sullivan question. It's actually called, that's actually the name of the book. Um, it's called the Dan Sullivan question. Okay, I think it's like 12 bucks on Amazon. You can go ahead and get it um, and check it out. It's a great book. And you can ask the one question that is huge. It does so much, you know? It would say, if we were having this conversation 12 months from now and you were looking back over these last 12 months, what results would you need to have seen for you to consider this a success? And they're going to tell you. They're going to go, okay, well, I got to, you know, I want to be at two, you know, $2 million a year. I want to be making $500,000 a month. Uh, you know, or I want to be netting 500,000. I mean, uh, I want to have higher client retention and I want to be known as the number one person in my market for this service. Okay, good. Boom. And now we have a plan that we can actually go to ahead and start to reverse engineer. But without that question being asked, right, it becomes very difficult for us to know what we're actually fighting for and what, what results he's actually expecting. Okay, this is also going to set expectations. So we want to elicit the outcome. And now we're going to state the facts. So we're going to say this is where you're going to let them know that the next step is going to be a sales call. Okay, you're very upfront about this. And you're very upfront about the fact that you're doing this to make because for the sake of making a sale. Okay, we're not going to lie about it. We're going to let them know that this is the reason why we're going to say, okay, so you're looking to accomplish to, you know, generate, um, you know, 5x your business revenue over the next 12 months, uh, increase client retention and uh, you know, you know, double your net worth or whatever. Now, is that right? Okay, so assuming that we can help you do that, are you interested in becoming a client? If they say no at this point, this is where you let them go. And you say, okay, well, great. I'm very glad that you let me know. Because remember, this is the vetting call still. This is not the sales call. This is, in our process, what we're doing is we are putting out an advertisement. They're clicking through to a sales letter. That sales letter is then taking them to, when they decide to click through on that sales letter, taking them to a, form where they're going to fill out more information about themselves and their business. Once they submit that form, it's going to take them to a calendar where they can schedule a time. Well, in between the time that we're meeting and then filling out that form, Sarah's calling them and going through this vetting process. And if they don't qualify just based off of the form, we're calling them and saying, hey, look, you're not going to be able to make, I'm sorry, here's some cool resources, but you're not going to be able to actually get the blueprint session or the free strategy or the free campaign or whatever it is that we're marketing at that time. Because unfortunately, you didn't qualify. Don't worry, though. We're going to send you some free cool things in your email. And when you do end up getting to this point inside your business or you 
basically get to that qualifying point, give us a call back. We'd love to get you in there. So it's still very friendly, still very friendly. But we want to make sure that if they're not interested in becoming a client or if they don't qualify, that you do not meet with them. Again, if they say, yes, I am interested in becoming a client, which is going to be the most the, the majority answer, then you let them know, okay, great. Do you remember what the investment is? And you're going to want to make them tell you. And a lot of the time they will say, I don't know, even though it most likely was on the sales letter, it was most likely in some, tor- in type, of, in some type of video or emails as well. I mean, like we, they always need to be reminded, okay? We always have to remind them. So if they don't remember, it's okay. You're just going to now be able to open up that door to let them know about price. Last thing that you want to do is spend an hour with somebody and go, oh, well, you know what? I didn't know it was that much money. Now they really have justification to think about it because you didn't, they didn't know about it, you know? And so now you're going to let them know, okay, look, do you remember the price? Do you remember what the investment is? And they're going to say, well, yes or no. They say no. Okay, well, here's what the price is. I'm glad that, you know, here's where you could find more about it or here's where this is or you can point them to some more information if you need to, but go over the price with them. And then are you able to afford that? And if you cannot ask this question, believe me, when I first asked it, my stomach tightened up. I know exactly what you're feeling like right now. If you're trying to say this out loud, you're like, man, I could not actually ask my clients. Are you able to afford that? I mean, these prospects are going to look at me. They're going to go, what is going on? And they're not. They are really going to be able to, uh, they're really going to respect this. And the reason why is because we don't want to waste their time. That's the main factor. We do not want to waste their time. And if you're like me, the things that you're going to be sharing with them are going to be things they're going to have to take action on. And if they can't afford to take action on those steps, then I would rather spend time with somebody who can because, again, time is limited. And that's the only asset that we don't have back. And I'm looking for partners. I'm looking for people to help make a lot of money. So we ask them, you know, are you able to afford that? And you can always have fun with it. You can say like, hey, you know, are are you able to afford that? You're not going to have to like donate any plasma or, you know, have to you know, uh, hold a garage sale or anything for that, are you? And they're going to they're gonna laugh. They're going to go, no, 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 it's okay. I can afford that. Or they're going to go, no, I can't. If they say, no, I can't, guess what you do? You kill the conversation. Okay, well, um, you know, um, thank you so much for being honest with me. I totally get that. It is an expensive decision or, you know, it is a big investment. And what do, what do you say since you're not in the position to make that investment? I'm going to go ahead and send you some free resources because that's really what, um, you know, you were looking for um, up to this point was some really some cool things that you could start. And I promise I'll be able to send that to you in an email. But I really don't want to waste your time because the things that it's going to require are going to require some some type of monetary investment. And it wouldn't be doing you any favors if I shared these with you um, and you couldn't really do anything with it. So I'm actually going to go into my vault. I'll send you out some personal stuff for where you're at inside your business. You can start to take action on that. And then when you get to a point where you can afford the services, let's get back together and we'll get together for a blueprint, whether you like this or you know, and so then you can let them know you just saved yourself an hour or maybe two hours. And imagine if you have four hours or four meetings a week at, let's say two hours, right? Let's say an hour and a half plus like a 30 minute buffer, right? You're looking at, that's like what, 24 hours a week. That's eight hours a week. So, or yeah, eight, like six to eight hours a week. You're looking at 24 to 32 hours a month. I mean, this is crazy, right? So when you're looking at that kind of money, I mean, that kind of time, think about how much money you're losing, right? That's 300 hours a year. I mean, let's, let's think about what we're actually putting together here. This is a lot, of, a lot of time that we're wasting if we're not actually vetting these clients after they qualify. And then what's going to happen is you're going to let them know, hey, do you need any help with making that decision? Because the first thing you're going to hear at the end of these typically years, people are going to say, I can't, you know, I didn't know what that was. That's too expensive. Da, da, da. Well, you're going to kill that right now with this vetting, with this vetting uh, stage right here. Are you able to afford that? No. Boom. Okay. And if they say no, maybe you can offer financing. Maybe you can get uh, offer a down sell on a product and say, okay, it's okay. Like I'll still meet with you. I have another product or another service that might fit your needs based on where you're at. Right. You could always downsell them. But you want to set the expectations and let them know what the price is, okay? And then always ask, okay, well, if we were to get you in there at 500 a month or, you know, at 300 or 200 or, you know, whatever, if whatever your price or your downsell product is, are you able to afford that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I could do that. And then we could go ahead and move up in product price or whatever it is. Okay, good. Now you just got, you kept a client and you set, you set the expectations and you most likely won't even need to meet with them now if it's that you know, low end of a product. You might be able to just say, hey, look, you know, I'm going to send you a link. I'll follow up with you. Go ahead and get started on this. I'll set you up with uh, you know, your sales rep or whatever it is that you're doing right now, right? So you could save a lot of time when you're doing this. And then do you need any help with making the decision? A lot of times people are going to have partners, SEO, uh, CEO, SEOs. They're going to have CEOs. They're going to have financial advisors. They're going to have wives. They're going to have people in their life that need to help them make a decision. Well, we want to ask who's all going to be involved with that process because without those decision makers, we're not going to have a meeting. And I know 
in the beginning stages, you're, you might be saying, I mean, I need to have these meetings. I don't care who's there. I just got to, I got to have these meetings. And if that's you, that's where I was at too. I get it. But I do regret that about what I was doing because and I was meeting with probably a lot of folks that I knew were not going to be able to explain my services well enough. And I was going to have to have the meeting twice. And that's what always happened. If I could capture, it was always like I had to capture the attention of one person, get them sold, and then have him bring their significant other on and then sell them both again at the same time. And that was taking me twice as long. When if you could just say, you know what? Hey, look, I'm glad to meet with you and whoever that decision maker is. Let's set up a time where we can all meet what time works best for everybody. Then we could set everything up like that, okay? Um, and then you would ask them, of course, um, so okay, so here's what I expect from our next conversation. Will you do me a favor? Will you tell me yes or no? I'm asking because usually when people say I'll think about it, that really means no. And I just want you to know that a no will not hurt my feelings, but I don't chase maybes. Does that make sense? And they're going to go, yes, that does. They're going to go, okay, yes. Or they're going to go, you know what? I'm going to need some time to think about it. Da, 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 da. I get that. And that's exactly why we're calling right now. I want you to think about it. But when we meet, are you going to be prepared, right? We have a meeting set for two days from now. That seems like plenty of time to be able to, you know, put some real, some real thought into making this investment and helping your business get to where you want to go today. Like how you mentioned, you think we could help you get. And then you go right into, so I'm going to ask again, at the end of our meeting, are you going to be prepared to just tell me yes or no? It will not hurt my feelings. And they're going to tell you, yeah, I'll be prepared. And then you're in a very good spot right now because now you've held them accountable for so many different things throughout this process. You've let them know exactly what is going to happen, how it's going to happen, and why it's important that they are actually telling you the truth in these because Again, we're going to go through the next step, which is going to make this even more solid and more concrete of a process. So you could tell that by having the qualification process in the beginning, we know more about who they are, and that might not even get them through the front door. Well, if they don't pass through the qualification process, no worries. We have the vetting process now. So now they're going to pass through this process. And now when you get all these answers in front of them and they're making it to the next process, which is actually on the sales call, then you're going to be able to see exactly how to handle that in the beginning stage of that sales call, which we're going to go into the next video, and how to tie all this together so that your close ratio is 80% plus. Okay, I'm talking like this is going to work like a charm. I promise you. Can't wait to see how it works. And then the final bullet point is to just say, hey, look, let me get this right and then restate everything. Okay, so you're going to just restate everything that you put out there. You're going to let them know, hey, so you're looking to accomplish X, Y, and Z and assuming you could do that, you're ready to become a client. Okay, and you do remember that the investment is and you're able to make that afford or you're able to afford that investment and you don't need anybody else in helping you make that a decision. And, um, you know, you could say however you like, I'm running through it, but you can see exactly how you want to restate this and make sure that you're going to hold them accountable for that. Now, vetting is um, when you're asking what they need, this is where you're gonna ask them point blank what they need in order to make a decision, right? So another great way that you could do this is if they're still like, you know, um, I'm not really, you know, I'm gonna need to, I'm not ready to make a decision or if they say I can't, you know, really at the end of it, commit to making a decision, yes or no, you know, I don't know. You can say, okay, well, let me ask you a question. What specifically do you need to see from me in order to make a decision? Okay, when you ask what they need, you're going to actually get what they need. And then you're just going to fill the gap and you're going to be able to offer that. If you can't offer it, then you know that, hey, look, I don't want to waste your time. I'm so glad that we got to the bottom of this. It sounds like you really are looking for this kind of service. Um, I can point you to a couple of referrals, but that's really not something that we specialize in. Glad that we got to the bottom of that. Don't want to waste your time. See you, see you around. Wish you the best. Right. So there's one way you can handle that. And if they do have something that you can offer, then offer it to them. And now you have a new client because they just said that's what they needed. Right. And now what's going to happen is you can actually approve or decline them, right? Based on what they're actually answering with, based on the stating of the facts and the qualification form that they filled out, you can feel free not to move forward. Do not feel like you have to move forward. Your job during this phase is not to convince them. It's to find out if they're worth your investment of your time. If they balk, refuse to commit or say anything that doesn't sound right, do not move forward. You can approve or decline these folks, okay? There's really no bad blood here. You just have to be cool about it. You're not going to be a, you know, you're not going to be hasty to them. You're not going to be all rude or ignorant. You're just going to be very nice and just give them some free stuff. I mean, that's really what they're after. So if you give them some more cool free stuff, some uh, whether it's information, products, uh, you know, things that you can actually give them, 
then you're gonna they're gonna feel cool and they're gonna stick around for when they do have the money to come back to you and believe me we turn down a lot of people that we meet with and it doesn't feel good to say no but it does feel good to know that i'm in control of my time and that's what we want to make sure that you guys are all aware of so that's it for this that concludes the vetting process um, i'm going to put the slides down below for you guys to make sure that you have that vetting framework and the actual uh, words on what to say the questions to ask so make sure to deploy this right away share your results in the group and go on to the very next video where we're going to go into the confirmation where this is going to happen on the sales call itself i'll see you over there